Balls. 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 I'm not going to beat around the bush in this video. Today, we're cooking balls. And we're also cooking tongue. More specifically, we have a cow tongue, duck tongues, cow balls, and duck balls. Now you might be wondering, Max, why are we cooking such ridiculous ingredients today? Here's the reason. I just ordered an alligator that we're currently dry aging. They sort of messed up my order and wanted to compensate me for it, and this is what showed up. Now obviously there's a million jokes we could make in this video, but it's my goal to take this very seriously, show you guys some delicious ways to cook all of these very unique ingredients, because honestly it takes a lot of balls to try these things. So what are we actually going to do with all this stuff? For this guy, we're going to smoke it and make some delicious beef lengua tacos. For these guys, going to fry them, make some Rocky Mountain oysters, should be very interesting. And over here, we're gonna make some Sichuan inspired duck tongues. Now these are actually a really popular bar snack in Asia and one of my favorite things to eat. But first, let's get started on that beef tongue. So this here is our whole beef tongue. And there's a few things to notice about it. The first is this really thick layer of skin. It's almost like silver skin. It's extremely tough. And it has this really interesting scratchy texture, almost like a cat's tongue. But it's also filled with a ton of incredible meat. As you can see, there's this huge muscle. Now, just because I'm interested, I'm actually gonna take a little slice from right here, just so we can see what that muscle looks like. There's actually a ton of incredible marbling here. And it reminds me that this is one of my favorite cuts for Korean barbecue. Now, before we smoke this thing, we actually need to remove this outer membrane here and we're gonna do that by boiling it in water. Okay, so while our water's getting hot, I'm just gonna chop up some onion here and we're just gonna be adding a little bit of flavor as that beef tongue starts to cook. Add in the onions, a few bay leaves, and some black peppercorns. All right, well, during the break, my glass pot just shattered for like the fifth time. There's water all over my kitchen, so we're gonna clean this up and use a traditional pot. Okay, round two, we are gonna let this thing simmer for probably one to two hours. And just like that, it's been two hours. I'm just gonna remove our cow tongue. The next step is to remove this outer layer of skin. Now, if we cooled it down, it'd be a little bit easier, but in the interest of time, we're just gonna go for it. And I just quickly peeled it off to reveal a smooth muscle underneath. For the next step, we'll be smoking it to get it tender. I added a thin layer of mustard for our binder and finished with a barbecue rub. Our tongue is all seasoned up, let's get it on the grill. And we're smoking over applewood, low and slow. Pretty much just cooking on the ground right now. Uh, this is my new apartment, it's the only grill I have, so we're making it work. Okay, now next up we have our duck tongues. So you can see that this here is the front part of the tongue, whereas this is the back. Now in my research, I found that duck tongues are actually not used to make that quacking sound. They're actually used to move the food around in their mouth. So the more you know. Now the first step is to make a quick marinade. And we're just gonna add some chili sauce, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of rice wine vinegar. We'll do some black pepper. And these are Sichuan peppercorns. They have a really unique and a distinct numbing effect when you eat them. I'm just gonna add some of those right in. Now we're just gonna give them a really good mix. These things are already smelling incredible. We're gonna let these marinate for probably about 45 minutes. While these marinate, we're just gonna whip up an egg white. And it's been 45 minutes. Now I'm just gonna pour out this liquid. And I'm just adding in half of that egg white and also a tablespoon of cornstarch. And once again, give it a nice mix. The first time I ate duck tongue was on a long train ride while living overseas. There's a company that specializes in duck neck and duck tongues and sell them in literally every train station. As an American, it felt uncommon, but it quickly became a staple snack every time I traveled. After frying for a few minutes, they're nice and golden brown and smelled incredible. And here we have our fried duck tongues. And you have to eat these with beer, so here we are. I'm gonna go for a bite. Looking pretty good. Oh yeah. So we actually just got a little visitor here mid taste test. Tibby apparently loves duck tongues as well, but texturally it's quite similar to like a chicken foot. If you've ever had one of those, there is a nice chew to it. In terms of taste, it's definitely like an Asian flavor profile. I'm not getting too, too much of those numbing Sichuan peppers, but it is there. I mean, these just taste absolutely delicious. Tibby, do you want some? Tibby. All right, I'm gonna let Tibby enjoy a couple of these, but let's get started on those balls. 
And the first thing I noticed was that the beef balls kind of had the same design as the SpongeBob clouds. Well, it's officially time to slice into this thing. Really hope I don't drop the ball on this. Next, that's a stupid joke. This is just gross. I'll be honest, I didn't even know what I was expecting, but it kind of looked like sea urchin if you've ever had that before. Now we're just gonna remove the edges here. And I tried to keep the slices nice and thin. Mom, can you pick me up now? Because the duck balls were smaller, I decided I didn't need to slice them up, which ended up being a mistake. But in the meantime, set up our dredging station. Eggs and mustard, as well as some panko breadcrumbs. I first dipped them in the egg mixture, then into the breadcrumbs. Based on my understanding, the acidic element in the mustard should help tame the more gamey flavors. I should also note that this dish is actually quite common in America, and I've tried them a few times. But needless to say, I've never made them before. I dropped the beef balls into the oil, then their duck counterparts. And little did I know, disaster was about to strike. Well, we learned a pretty big lesson today. Apparently duck balls like to explode. Got some oil here. I don't know if you can see if it's red. All over my body. Sophia's injured too. So next time, definitely pierce them before frying them. That's probably a good idea. Okay, so for reference, it's been four days since we filmed. There's my burn. There's my sister's burn. Be careful with oil. But either way, I finished them with salt and a squeeze of lemon, and we were left with some pretty decent looking golden brown balls. And slicing into them, they looked like, uh, this. Well, I was definitely expecting some highs and lows in this video. I was not expecting the duck balls to explode, but here we are. Real talk though, be careful with hot oil. Hope this serves as a reminder. But anyway, here's one thing I'll say. Trying Rocky Mountain oysters when you're out with your buddies at a bar, drinking beers, they show up, they're all fried, they look delicious. Working with it, seeing the inside, it's sort of a whole different ball game, but of course we're still gonna try it. Before I do though, if you are enjoying this content, Please make sure to like the video. Yeah, it's super helpful and I'm about to eat a ball. So here we go. It's not bad. It just tastes like fried food. I was expecting something really gamey or like off-putting, but it just literally tastes like a fried meat product, chicken or something. Not bad on the beef Rocky Mountain oysters. Moving on to these stupid duck balls. They got really tiny. All right, I'm going for a bite. It actually tastes pretty good. Very similar to the first one. And I was sort of expecting these things to like pop in my mouth and have a really weird like creamy texture, but it really wasn't the case. They're a bit more firm on the inside. Now, would this be my first choice ordering on a menu? Probably not, but again, it's pretty good. All right, well, it's just about time we check on that beef tongue. So our tongue is at 190 internal, right where we want it to be. Now we're gonna make a quick glaze for it. But since the last time I saw you, I managed to slice my finger putting something in the dishwasher. There was an exposed knife. I have no idea what's going on today. All sorts of injuries, but yeah, let's take care of this glaze. So it's very simple, just a little bit of soy sauce, mostly for color and a little bit of saltiness and also a bit of maple syrup for a nice tacky exterior. We're gonna take this outside to paint. At this point, the tongue should be nice and tender, and I'm just painting on the glaze for a final layer of flavor. After 10 minutes, it's good to go, and this is the result. Sorta got deformed during the boiling step, but really great looking color on it. Slicing into it, it looked unbelievably juicy, and all that was left to do was fry it up. It's totally edible at this point, but the sear adds a nice component if you have the time. Believe it or not, I ate tongue a fair amount growing up. It's actually one of my dad's favorite foods. I always ate it, but had a hard time truly appreciating it. I couldn't mentally get over the fact that it was a tongue. But over the years, I've grown to enjoy it a lot more, and I found that putting it in a taco is the best way to go. I think the texture is what makes it most unique. The only way I can describe it is almost springy in a way. Toasted the tortillas and added a few of my favorite toppings. Avocado, onions, cilantro, lime, and finished with some hot sauce. And just like that, it was time to eat. 
here it is. I gotta say, at least visually, we've made a drastic improvement since the last thing we've cooked. These look amazing. I'm going for a bite. Thank you out. Once again, we have a visitor. I mean, this is easily by far the best thing we've cooked today. Something about beef tongue, it's supremely beefy and that texture is so unique. Definitely worth trying. It almost reminds me of brisket, but with a little bit more of a chew, it's absolutely delicious. Let me know if you give this one a shot. Also, if you're still watching after all this time, thank you so much. Let me know what you think about this video. Really appreciate your support. Don't forget to like, comment, and I'll see you next time.